Yeah, this is going to be a big story. I apologize. Love it. <laughs> this is how it started. This is how it started. Uh, so yeah, I was like eight. And my uncle came down and he was like, oh, I've seen this like paper brick machine. Basically where you get like shredded paper or something, soak it in water, and then you like compress it and make it into like a brick and let it dry. And you burn that on your fire. And I was like an eight year old. And I was like, wait, I could like sell them. And like, I didn't have a job because I was eight. But I was like, oh, I could actually get some money. So uh, he was like, oh yeah, like just start doing it. So I did. And I went around like my local like village and just print out these stupid little flyers that I made that were like, honestly, they were the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> like now I look, I used to look at them. I think when I was eight, I was like, oh, they were amazing. Why wouldn't people buy anything from there? Uh, so then I went around the village and I managed to get a couple orders. And some people were like, oh, every week I'll buy some. Cause it was just like something, everybody had wood burning stoves in the village. <laughs> so it, it was like, I was trying to say it was all eco as well. Cause you're reusing paper instead of like just chopping down a tree. <laughs> that was my angle that was my angle um it's not bad a young entrepreneur right there yeah and then because it was only like sold during winter i was like what can i sell through summer because nobody's burning stuff in the fire so my dad had a greenhouse so he started like growing plants and i'd like put them into tubs and sell them during the summer so i was always like a wee bit of a wee entrepreneur like this is having eight. wee business ideas but so you're doing this at eight yeah well i was like eight Eight, nine, ten. I was doing that for a couple of years, yeah. um, just because I was like, "What else to do? There's a village. There's nothing to do." <laughs> um, and then when I went to high school, that's when I started getting into woodwork. I had like a, I don't know if you ever had like woodwork class in high school. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really enjoyed that for some reason. Like, I loved that class. I thought it was great how you could just think of an idea, and then make it in real life. Like, you could think of anything and then make it, and see it like come to reality if that makes sense when you say it like that it sounds like really fun and awesome like really great yeah. but when i was doing it, i was like this is such a chore like i hate that oh yeah it's just school and they're gonna like rate it why do they need to rate it why can they rate that's it? The, thing, yeah, the, the rating thing i didn't really agree with. i was like yeah because it's difficult it's difficult to get it like a decent idea um because i hate the way that they used to make us come up with ideas it was like oh just draw anything and it's like draw anything <laughs> draw anything i mean that that that's not quite, it's not quite how you do it, but yeah, so I, I really enjoyed that class. And there was an old, um, my neighbor at my old house, he was like really into like wood turning on lathes. So he'd make, he can make like a, literally a wooden apple or like a wooden pear and it would look like identical. Like it'd be the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. Like it looks like a bit of fruit, but it's yeah. wooden. Like, I don't know how he, I still don't know to this day how he does it. <laughs> but honestly, like the stuff he makes is like super, like high quality stuff. Right. Um, so I always had like kind of older, like they were like they were kind of like my granddads, mm. like even though they weren't, but they were like my neighbors. Um, your your uh, hobby elders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd always go like around to their garage and I'd be like just watching them make stuff. Yeah. Um. So then I started doing it. Um. And one of my teachers in high school was like, "Oh, you should enter the Royal Highland Show because oh, yeah. they have like a, they actually have a woodwork competition, which I knew nothing about." Um. So he, he said that. The first year I did it, it was making something out of recycled wood. So at that time, I couldn't really afford, like, I didn't have any tools. So I was borrowing, like, my neighbor's tools and stuff. Um, and I couldn't afford wood. So I was just, like, picking up pallets because it was free. And I was, like, making stuff out of that. Again, um, good for the environment. You're putting Exactly. Your reusing them. Reusing them. Um, and then I actually ended up winning. I made a table and won the competition somehow. Um, and then the guy... When I, went up, when I went to see like what award I'd won, there was a guy there that like, um, I think he was like an executive or something for the Royal Highland Show. Right. And he was like, oh, I really like this table. And I own a restaurant in Inverness. Can I buy that table? And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> like, I don't know how I've done it, but honestly, I just think I've had like some, a good amount of luck throughout my life. What age were you um, when you did that? I must have been... 14 14, 14 was 15, like, yeah was there like an age bracket for that competition and uh, no like any age so you're competing can. against everyone so like people that could yeah. be like pretty much professional people that do this for like 11 and like yeah. that's what their entire job and then you're like here's a pallet i'm gonna I'm make it into the table <laughs> and, and then you do that as well <laughs> because i went in and it was like people that made like cabinets and like super fine like fancy stuff but i was like i'm never gonna win but I like sent in, a, I don't know if I cheated, but I sent in like a little like story to go along with it. So I took, cause I was like, oh, 
they'll they'll see what age I am and they'll be like, oh, that's pretty sick. So uh, I made like a little story with like photos showing how I made it. And I told them the whole process. I think they liked that. That was like the bit they were like, oh, we read the story about how it was made. Like, oh, yeah, that's, oh, that's really nice. So I was like, wow. Oh. Um, but me being me, I like to keep like the first thing of everything I make. Because mm. it's like, it's kind of like, I don't know. I feel like the first version is never good. Or it's not as good as it could be. Yeah. So I kept true. that first table. Yeah. Um, and made another one and sold it to him. And it's still there <laughs> to this day. That's amazing. Cool. Um, Show it and that's basically like how I go into it. Yeah, that guy, yeah like, if you're ever in Inverness, you don't go to the storehouse. Uh, I bet it felt really food. like that changed like uh, your perspective on it. And maybe, I don't know, but like as soon as it like someone buys something, I feel like now it's a reality. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, now yeah. it's like you can actually get involved in it and you feel like there's a reason to do it more than just a hobby. Yeah. Because at that age, I was like, I, I ended up selling it for 150 quid. And I was like, at that age, I was like, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Like, I've never had that much money during my life. So I was like, that's pretty nice. I'm 150 quid when I was that age. Um, and from there, I just kept going. Because I've never really had like a workshop. Well, no, I do now. But when I was that age, I was literally just building stuff in my mom's like living room. <laughs> so I actually drilled I drilled a hole in the floor one time by accident I don't even know how that happened so she started getting annoyed because I was just stacking up tools I had like drills fucking everything saws and I was just building stuff in the wood in the living room and it was like wood dust going everywhere but I had no else to do it so I was like one Most moment. like parents are angry because you like I don't know spilled some like juice on the carpet yeah. And they're angry because you're like, you just drilled, like, you drilled, drilled a hole the floor, in the floor, making a table. Yeah. So wait, what, uh, like, what did you transition into? So you started making tables, but you were like, just making them out of like makeshift stuff or like? Yeah, so there's like pallets that I could get for free. Right. Basically. Um, and then from there, because like people were really buying pallet stuff, because it, I mean, it doesn't look the best. Like, it's better when you move on to other types of wood. You get fancy. I mean, it's, it's kind of cool and rustic, though, and very, like... Yeah, that's the way I, like, put it across. It's, like, it's rustic, it's reusing it, yeah. it's good for the environment. Um, but then from there, I actually, finally, we moved house, and I actually got a workshop in the garage. Nice. So from there, for years, I was just trying to sell stuff at, like, craft shows and things. Mm. But they were really a wee bit hit or miss. Like, you don't know how many people are going to turn up your day. What are they going to be interested in? Yeah. Um, so I'd always like spend weeks like making tons of stuff like candle holders, um, mm. bottle openers, and like loads of like little like gift kind of things. And sometimes I'd like sell loads, and sometimes I sell nothing. Um, but either you way, you've got paid for like stall at these places. Yeah, and they're usually like twenty quid. Taking a, a financial risk almost to try and get yourself out there. Yeah. Um, but eventually, like I started a Facebook page and just posted like stuff that I was making just for myself. Because, like, even if I wasn't selling things, I'd still be in the garage mm -hmm. building stuff for myself. Because um, it's just what I enjoy to do. Yeah. Um, but then from there, I finally, like, people started, like, seeing me building stuff. And they were like, oh, I'll ask you to build something for me. So I'd start then building more tables, more gates have been a big seller this year, actually. Gates? Yeah, yeah. It's really weird. Like, like everybody loves gates. gates. For, like, people's uh, houses or, like, gates for, like, uh, agricultural stuff? like both like field gates and like fancy kind of gates for houses so huh? for some reason like it's been crazy the amount of people that want to buy a gate like and then even people like companies that sell gates in like my local area are like no one's buying our gates anymore can you start like i don't know selling us your gates wow. I'm like, ah. so i don't know that might start happening it's That's like crazy. crazy how like just me doing stuff on my own in my spare time whilst doing uni have like managed to like get the attention of other companies because they're losing sales just because some 19 year old kids selling gates That's mad. which is crazy so do you think but, uh, do you think people are buying gates right now because like during lockdown so many people are out painting their fancies and stuff and they're like right, yeah no that was it that's crazy during summer like everybody was doing up their houses and like doing work outside so they also were buying like planters and things to put flowers in yeah but I'm, every time i deliver something they're the customer's always shocked. They're expecting some like old man. They're yeah. like, oh, I thought I thought you were gonna be like really old. I was like, nah, it's just me. But that's really interesting hearing that because like I feel like right now it's so often to hear, oh, this business doing really bad, this other like that, uh, making no money, whatever. But mm -hmm. then you hear like other like businesses and and stuff like that, 
taken off because of uh, lockdown and because of like yeah. current situation. It feels kind of good to hear it in a way, like not because, I don't know, I don't want to like say, oh, it's good that some people are succeeding and not some other, but it's yeah. good that some people are succeeding, even though, yeah. you know. Um, but I also love the fact that actual fully fledged companies are coming to you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to you. I find that crazy. Yeah, that's the best. You're taking on the know. actual corporations. Yeah, man. Um, Cause there's even like people wanting to like stock like wooden chopping boards. Um, I was uh, for a bit supplying a local like plant shop that started up near me mm -hmm. or like this other girl that started up a plant business and uh, nice. I sell like wooden plant stands. So it's good that I'm like, instead of just doing orders, I've got like weekly kind of commissions that people are wanting, um, which keeps me going. So yeah. I'm hoping I can make this my full-time job once I finish uni. Because I, mean, well, I, mean, I don't know what else I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm guessing you could make this your full-time job, right? Hopefully, yeah. I mean, if I put like a lot of time into it and like properly set up a proper business, uh, it's, I don't know why I'd say start the two at the same time. Like start the joinery and the skateboard at the same time. I mean... A lot of people just think one's enough. But. Nah, you gotta keep hustling. Um, Why not? Yeah. Life's short. Um, I suppose, yeah. So, like the when you say it's like not like a full time job right now, like what would you consider yeah. right now? Just a hobby that makes some money, or? Um, do you have a job no. other than that? No, I used to uh, like last year, but just before like the whole fucking lockdown and everything happened. Um, ended up like just let me go um which was kind of annoying because i didn't get the furlough or nothing <laughs> then that gave me a bit more motivation to um actually start the joiner stuff and try and earn some money again but, well, uh, i feel like it, so yeah. many people have been affected by lockdown and they couldn't do their job but a lot of people couldn't mm -hmm. get paid for do not doing their job as well so they were like yeah. nothing but i mean i'm definitely in the uh the bandwagon of doing things like you're doing where you are in control of your own income. So like if lockdown happens again, you don't need to worry about it. You can still keep doing your thing. It doesn't rely on yeah. any like outsourcing or any any sort of like body in control of you. You can just do it. And no, like yeah, definitely. Our position to be in, isn't it? Yeah. That's what I quite like about being your own boss. It's like you can't even control your own hours. So like yeah. I'll be in the workshop till like midnight some nights. Just because I haven't I didn't start as early in the morning or just like you feel like yeah. going um but like for me it's more just trying to get the orders done and just keep keep going sometimes it's difficult with a bit of motivation because it feels like i'm the only thing i'm doing is going in the workshop and building stuff mm -hmm. i mean you miss that other side of things um like actually just taking a break and relaxing but i feel like i'm wasting time if i'm not in the workshop there's nothing better than that feeling of uh like the more work you put in the more you get back out of that yeah that's something that a lot of people won't get at their jobs yeah no i definitely do see like if the more i work on it and the bigger it's like starts to grow then you do see like i do see how it can keep going because in the, in the joinery business it's all about like word of mouth so like mm -hmm. repeat customers and people saying you've done a good job because then they tell their friends and then they tell their friends or like even just somebody passing and seeing something you built outside somebody's house they'll like a load of people have said that oh they saw like a gate you made or they saw like a bin store and then they've asked to buy one mm -hmm. so that's kind of that's, you do get the reward from that. Um, and it's also nice build, doing something with your own hands. Like, I don't know, it's kind of weird, but I feel like everything's kind of gone quite digital these days. Yeah. And I'm quite, I quite like being able to like build something like physical and be like, that's something I did. You can like see the work that was put into it and like the care that I put into the like what I make. That's I, what it is for me. Really. It's almost like, I'm, I'm sort of like thinking about this right now. This is not a theory that I've been uh, thinking about for a while. But just you're saying that it's almost like in like the digital area, everything's becoming more like personal. Like people want to watch like influencers that are low scale because you can, can relate to them and stuff like that. Yeah. And like YouTubers and stuff like that. And everything's kind of going away from the mainstream. But then in reality, everything's like, now nah, I'll just buy from Ikea. I'll just buy yeah. from like the big companies. I'll just buy like all this kind of stuff. I'll go to Tesco or I'll buy from Apple. Yeah nobody's buying them like that's like low scale like low quantity very personal level anymore yeah. it's like what you're doing is almost the complete opposite in both spectrums you're still mm -hmm. creating some some stuff bespoke like for the client and it, i don't know i love it that's yeah. it's so sad that we're losing so much of that 
In fact, I was having a conversation yeah. with my dad the other day. So my dad built his own house. Um, and uh, like the people that made like, I don't know how houses are built at all. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but he said that the people that built, like they made the steel beams or whatever, they were from mm -hmm. his local town back, I don't know, when he built the house like 50 years ago. Um, yeah. And they were just like, from the village and they just knew how to weld and whatever and they know how to do all that stuff and he says like that's all these trades are dead like i don't know what's happened oh, yeah. in the last 50 years everything's dead no one knows how to make stuff i'm completely yeah. useless if like anything breaks in my house i don't know what to do i just need i phone the landlord i'm like i don't know what to do something's broken yeah. you know what i mean we've lost so mm. many skills so not even just on the level of like you can actually make stuff to sell you can just fix stuff do you know what I mean? Mm. You've got a, a level of understanding that's beyond almost everyone in the UK right now, which is a crazy, crazy position. I didn't think about it that way. Because, like, stuff breaks in my flat all the time, and I just go up to it. I'm just, like, get a screwdriver out or just, like, get a drill out and just fix it. Put it yeah, back together. I that, but I just they're, like, it <laughs> But I don't see it as, like, special. I'm just, like, I mean, there's no other way. Like, when I grew up, it was, like, you either fix it or you don't have it anymore. So, <laughs> I mean. I like that perspective. That's good. That's good. Yeah, definitely. I, like, I think p hopefully people start like appreciating the kind of small business stuff again. Because yeah. like, if you buy something from IKEA, it's going to break in like yeah. a couple of years, guaranteed. So if like, I mean, not to like show off, but like if I build something, I'm I'm expecting it to last like a, like a good amount of years. Yeah. Like For I'm sure. building it to last. Um, it'd be nice if people started using these communities again. Like everybody had their own skill, and like start doing what they enjoy, like their hobby or like whatever special skill they're good at mm -hmm. instead of using these big companies like everybody just has this little skill that they can help each other out and work together yeah if that makes sense so no, i feel I like a lot of communities have kind of died there's i i think there's no such thing as community at all anymore like uh, so me and my girlfriend moved to spain in october and uh, we moved into this flat and every single thing in this flat is ikea every single thing in this flat i'm like this is ridiculous oh. this is crazy um, but then I realized that there's like also a shift here because when you go about, there's still like bakers, people with like actually baking stuff from scratch. And they're like, oh, no, you can't have this yet. It's still like mm. uh, proof, proving, proving, I don't know. Oh, yeah. And like there's the markets that sell everyone straight from the farms. And it's like, I don't know. And there is a sense of community. People, like mm. I know everyone in my building, but back home, like I know no one in my street. Do you know what I mean? Like it's yeah, yeah. so different here. Um, so like it's weird that sometimes when a community dies, almost like a part of the community still lives in a different sense but i feel yeah. like back home it's dead it's just dead mm. no yeah. one has skill and no one cares about one another and stuff like that's all gone at this point yeah so, yeah it is to be honest <laughs> <laughs> how negative you kind of wonder nah but i do i do get that like how do you you look into the future and you think is this going to change or is it just going to get worse like people are becoming more divided in my opinion i think so as well that's why I ran away. Is, That's yeah. why I, How has it been in Spain? Uh, it's all right. I can't complain. Like, uh, yeah. in terms of like lockdown and stuff, it's pretty normal. Mm. You, you wear a mask yeah. everywhere you go, but I mean, you're allowed to do whatever you want. Um, yeah. yeah. Been, it's warm. <laughs> it's not that warm. It's not? It's not that warm now. Nah. It's kind of like 10 degrees. So warmer yeah. than the UK or warmer than Scotland. Yeah. Here. I mean, you have been getting snow, right? Oh, yeah. It's been snowing for weeks here. I'm sick of it. We're definitely not getting that. <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah. um, what part of Spain are you in? I'm in Valencia, so East Coast. Oh, yeah. This is actually supposed to be the warmest area in Spain, I've been told. Damn. It's supposed to be a desert, in fact, but they've like created yeah. some fancy irrigation system so that it's not a desert. Wow. Um, but yeah, going back onto like carpentry and woodwork and yeah. stuff. Yeah. What's uh, what's your like your process now? Like, do you have like a like creative pieces you do where you're like, I have an idea, I want to just make that. Like, you're not doing it for a client. You're just like, I just want to make it for me, just if I can see what where I can go with this. There is actually there's a couple of things. Um, I made like sometimes I just make like little picture frames. It's kind of weird. Um, but I've collected like, do you ever see the one pound notes that they used to have? Yeah. I well I like collected like some of them and I was like, oh well, nobody has them anymore, so I want to put them in a picture frame. So I actually made like a little picture frame um, just of that. Like I make little art pieces. I've got some over here. I can yeah, yeah, please, yeah. So uh, unfortunately the notes have kind of fall, but it's just like a little box. This is not a good um, advert for your... Uh... <laughs> this is not a good advert. This is bad. That's bad. Um, 
I actually found a cannonball. What? So I was like, let's make I, a little stand a for that. Ball. Oh, that's sick. I, I uh, found a cannonball as well once, which is really weird. Um, oh, really? Yeah. And now I feel like I'm obligated to buy a stand. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, I was just like, what can I do with it? Because it just rolls about everywhere. So yeah. Use it as like a little paperweight or something. Uh, this is like a top secret project that's been on for a couple of years. If anybody steals this idea, I'm going to have to see it. Maybe it saying on a podcast isn't the best idea then. <laughs> well, I'm hoping to release it soon. But okay. I need to like try and figure it out. But it's basically like a little like wave pattern. Um, and it's actually like, trying to angle it. it's actually coasters that like click together. Oh, what? They're like little hexagons. And then they all connect together and make like a big coaster. That so like if you epic. had that in like a restaurant, you could be like, oh, I'll just take one coaster off for a cup. I want it in my And you could have like their own design on top of there. You could have your little fruit bowl in the center and then you could like yeah. take them all apart and then serve tea. It's pretty And sick. people could be like, tell me whatever they want on design on top of it and yeah. you can make it completely customized. So that's like, like what, the uh, big idea. But what happened in your mind to like decide that's what I'm going to make? Like, did you see something that inspired you or did you go here? This is something that should exist. Why doesn't it exist? Well, I've seen like somebody making like hexagon coasters. Um, and then I was like, seem like these little magnets and I was like well why can't you make it so they all like click together make it like a huge pack and I've been really into like CNC's which is like a it's like a router it's like a cutter thing on like a it's like a robot and it can move about and cut wood however you program it to. right so that's how you get like the hexagons like completely perfect so there's no gap uh -huh. line up and you get like a laser as well and you can like laser engrave into the top but it's just like I don't know what goes in my head is just like thinking about things to make all the time. Like I'm always thinking about how things are made, how you can like take things apart and put it back together again. I just got, got that kind of creative mind, I guess. But it's just what I enjoy to do. Whenever I talk to like people that like are musicians or whatever, they're always like, yeah, I just, I just hear music all the time and stuff like that, right? Mm. I mean, it sounds cliche, but yeah, you're like, oh, I just hear music all the time. You must just yeah. like think about designs of wood and stuff like that, designs of like... Yeah carpentry all the time and you're just like right yeah. there's another one there's another one there's another one you see like carpentry like musicians hear music if that makes sense yeah constantly going at it see like the design you have mm -hmm. how do you physically create that do you need to like work away at that do you have a machine that does that like that uh that wave the wave design i have to admit i found on the internet and then i was just like that'll do for the test one um but then it's like yeah it's like a laser that like a laser burns into the wood yeah what? i had to like hire a guy to like do it though that's the problem with this is like it uses like machines that i don't have so i had to like pay a guy it's just yeah. it's, like, it's like what literally like like some kind of sci-fi laser that just burns into the wood and it like literally like digs into the wood and just makes it disappear so it's like fully like engraved so the, but it's like that kind of black line where it's burnt on the behind so like it digs it in like a couple of mills but sometimes i'm surprised by what level of the future we're already living in oh yeah like it's just crazy lasers and and it's just normal <laughs> like i thought lasers were like <laughs> kind of like a big deal for certain yeah. people not just things that people could just buy we could just buy lasers and make stuff yeah i mean i want to get i really want to get a 3d printer that'd be pretty cool because mm. then you can look you can do it. that's a crazy piece of technology right there yeah um, doesn't 3D printing kind of like go against all the wood stuff? I guess a little bit. I mean, it's not as eco friendly and it uses a lot of plastic, but it's useful. It's fun. I mean, you can think of anything. I, that. <laughs> I mean, I with that. Um, a little hobby, I guess. To transition into something else, how did you get into skateboards and stuff like that? Um, well, the skateboards, it's just like I've always skateboarded like through high school and everything. I've just like, even though I couldn't do any tricks, I was literally just using it to just get about places because it's fun yeah um but i guess it's like it kind of links to escape the woodwork because it's like you're literally just riding on a like a plank of wood yeah. so that's why it kind of connected to me it was like well it's the both kind of joined so i used to like do it as a hobby um but then i was like it'd be nice to paint my own skateboard have my own personalized one um and then i knew a couple of my friends were like artists so i was like well since i've like managed to figure out a way 
to like get income and have a job through my hobby, what I enjoy doing. Like I was thinking, well, how can I help other people do that? Because I've got people that like to do music, people like to make films and videos, um, people like to do art. So I was like, let's all like collaborate on a, like a little project. So that's why we did the skateboards. Because it's not, it's not, I can't take any credit for the artwork. I can take credit for like two of the boards I designed, but the rest <laughs> is just like my friends. And they, if a board sells, they'll get like a cut of the profit. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, they get a bit of it. Um, but I hand paint their designs onto the boards. Um, and then I get some of my friends to make like little promo videos for stuff. Like we had a competition back in December last year and two of my friends like recorded and edited that. And then I got some other of my friends to put the music, their music behind it. And it worked really well. Like thousands of people saw it. And I want to keep doing that in the future, do like more kind of skate videos. Because, uh, but the whole skateboard stuff is kind of just bringing people together if I can. Yeah. That's awesome. I love. If uh, restrictions get eased, hopefully start a wee like, I don't know, skate group. Just have people just go out and skateboard and learn tricks and hang out with each other. It's, it's you cool. are single handedly bringing back community and uh, like actual craftsmanship. <laughs> I mean, I try my best. I try my best. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, do you do like other stuff other than like uh, like the carpentry woodwork stuff, like other creative stuff? Uh, apart from like painting, not really. Not really. I don't know. It's, it takes up a lot of my time. Yeah. I um, know. like I don't. <laughs> that's this is all I do really. Um, especially with lockdown, it's like well, I'm do, but yeah, definitely this is my like main kind of creative stuff that I do. I want, I've always wanted to get into music, but I've always been terrible at it. Like I, I thought I could play the drums when I was younger. Not a chance. I've just got no rhythm. I've got no rhythm. Yeah, me too. I'm useless. I'm hoping to like, I don't know, start doing more videos, learn how to like do video edits and stuff. That'd be pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, did you say you were at college or university? Uh, uni. Yeah. Uni. What are you studying? Uh, business management with entrepreneurship. <laughs> so, uh, Perfect combination. Yeah. Hopefully it works. Hopefully it teaches me some stuff. That's it's brilliant. going well so far. Yeah. Uh, so have you been able to apply to, skills from that into what you want to do a couple actually because it's quite good because like they teach you like the theory so it's good that i can like leave class and i'll be like well i'm going to test whatever you just told me and see if it actually works um so like right now i'm doing one of my one of my like, modules is social media marketing right so it's like how to like market yourself through social media which i'm terrible at i like i have to kind of admit i hate social media i don't know why yeah. i just i don't like it um but I should use it more because, like, not a lot of people, like, on my ogle and skateboard stuff, nobody knows it's actually me. Like, I don't show myself and, like, I hardly use it that much. Um, but if I did, I feel like the business would grow more. Yeah, definitely. So that's yeah. why I'm hoping once I finish that module, I can then use whatever information I learn yeah. and actually expand through social media. Because mm-hmm. like, if I did, I'd meet tons more people in Edinburgh. And hopefully that's how, you, you know, you grow and sell more skateboards and meet more people. But I just get, definitely get better at that because I'm terrible at it. <laughs> so would you say most of what you do right now is like word of mouth and stuff like that? Yeah, basically. Um, although I use Facebook a lot, like in the little like villages where I do the woodwork. Because obviously I sell the woodwork stuff to more, and carpentry stuff to more like older people. Mm-hmm. Like in their kind of like 50s, people with families. I've noticed they use Facebook all the time. And they love their little like Facebook groups for their village. <laughs> like I'll throw an advert in there and <laughs> people will love it. But it's quite cool because then I get all the old customers being like, oh, Matthew's done a good job. And like oh, they kind of hype me up a wee bit, which is cool. Um, so it's nice to know that like, you know, people don't start to know who I am in these little villages. Yeah. But I need to start doing the same with the skateboard stuff. I'm just try and expand it a little bit. So what can I, what other stuff you got on the go? You've got like skateboarding and you've got like the carpentry stuff and, and like would you consider them like two different projects? Yeah, yeah probably. Um, I wish they could like work together, but definitely two separate things because people that are into skateboarding aren't really into the carpentry stuff that makes sense yeah like you I can't really you can't sell somebody a skateboard and a gate i wish you could <laughs> but there's yeah, a lot into that kind of stuff there's probably some guy out there that's looking for both right now on the internet probably hopefully <laughs> um so yeah i'm hoping to like oh. no go ahead go ahead huh? i was hoping to start uh with the skateboard i was hoping to start clothes as well so i sleep in lousy about yeah so you can like get clothes to match the boards Mm. So you buy like a whole collection right. with all the same design. So I was going to start speaking to Mousy about that, or Cammy, see if he can help me with that. Which would be pretty sick. I like how you call him by his brand name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's <amazing. laughs> 
Um, so yeah, where do you see like all this going then? You want to just make it a fully fledged business? Like this is that for you? Yeah. Um, hope. I mean, I hope that it can just keep going. Um, because I've worked for like a joiner in my in like the past, and it was good, but it's not as good as work for yourself. I don't know why. There's something about like looking at something and being like, I've done this. This is what I've done. I can't like nobody else can take credit. For, like nobody else can really take credit for like something you've made or like something you've built. It's like it. It's a lot of pride for me in a way. Um. But yeah, I hope I can just keep getting it bigger and just do this as like full time job after uni, so I'll never have to get a job again, yeah. which would be a dream come true for me. No, I don't even want to become like rich. As long as I can live happily, like with enough money to get by, I'll be fine. Um. Yeah, I mean, I I did that podcast like I think two or three podcasts ago about like mm. uh, turning your hobbies into like should you make money from your hobbies. And I'm yeah. guessing you're definitely in the bandwagon of like, yeah, you should make money from your hobbies. I, I don't see why not. I don't see why yeah. not. I mean, if you if you can enjoy it whilst doing it, why not? I mean, you've got, unfortunately in this world, you've got to earn money. You've got to be able to buy food. So you might as well, instead of sitting at a desk job nine to five, you might as well earn your money through something you enjoy. Yeah. And sure. have a good time whilst doing it, to be honest. So in your time of doing this, it's never become like, like a burden to do it you've never felt like oh this is killing me i have to do this a little bit i have to admit a little bit sometimes uh sometimes you just kind of you get a bit like burnt out if mm -hmm. you do it too much you're just mm -hmm. like oh i've got to go finish building this table or like get because like obviously i give people like deadlines as to when i try and get things finished right so sometimes it's a wee bit stressful where it's like i've got like an essay to do for uni and i've got like yeah. orders to complete and i just i'll stay up like I'll hardly sleep. I'll just stay up like all through the night and day, just like trying to do both at the same time. That's when it gets a little bit like, is it worth it? Mm. I wish I could just like at night, at, like a normal job at five o'clock, you'd finish, you go home, forget about it. That's the other thing. Like I, I'm always thinking about the businesses and stuff. It's not like you can, I can just turn off at like a certain time and just not think about it, like people would do when they went home from work. Which is kind of like the annoying thing. It's like you can never leave it. But I guess the uh, the alternative is that those people that do just leave their job, like they don't care about their job and their no, job doesn't care about care. them either. But at least you've yeah. got something that you can invest time into and then you get that reward back. And mm. uh, you've got that like gravitation of like, yeah, you did create this thing. And and I guess also, if you uh, if you were like, do you know what, I can't do it. I'm like, this is killing me right now. I need to take a time off. You can just take time off. Other people, oh, yeah. like, they're stuck in that like nine yeah. to five or whatever. And that's them. So at least you can escape if you if you really had to just for a little bit. Yeah, I could just tell people to be like, I'm going on holiday for a bit, like yeah. <laughs> taking some time off, which is nice. But it'd be nice to like get other people involved, try and take some of the work off me in a way. Because one of my flatmates is actually helping me make a website, which would be good to finally get that on. So at least there's like, I've got delegating jobs to some people. Yeah. You get like a full creative circle right now, and it's amazing to see. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, because he enjoys doing that whole coding and stuff. So I was like, might as well get involved. Yeah, definitely. So I usually try and pay people in skateboards. I'll give them a free skateboard or something. <laughs> <like> that. <laughs> That's a pretty sweet deal, I'd say. Um, what was I going to say there? We're gonna start. Oh, yeah. So, like, see, like, um, musicians will have, like, mm -hmm. artists to look up to, or painters will have, like, painters they look up to. Do you have, yeah. like, carpenters you look up to? Actually, well, yeah, um, probably. Probably like my old neighbor that still makes these like amazing clocks and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like, I don't think I'll ever get, well, hopefully I will. But like his skill level is, it's amazing. Like the things he can make with his hands, I'm just like, I don't understand how he does it. Yeah. Uh, and there's also like, I don't know, there's some like YouTube people that are pretty good for like woodwork stuff, um, which is what I used to watch when I was like growing up. Because <laughs> it's like, if I couldn't make something, I'll be like, I'll watch somebody make it. It's kind of like people, I don't know video game and I've, like, I've never been into like watching people play video games but watching somebody make something now that is something interesting that's cool i like how yeah. the first one you named there was someone you actually know in reality like your role model is actually someone you know that would be so mm -hmm. rare for so many people as well yeah i guess that, but yeah like I, that's the thing i don't think people like meet as many people as they used to you know well obviously because now but like yeah. <laughs> meeting people that had like a skill or something like meeting like a musician or like a joiner and be like wow that's amazing i aspire to be like as good as that it's all online now it's all like oh i've seen this person yeah. on instagram or something yeah you're too right there 
it's kind of scary actually when you put in perspective like it really it's, it's absolute nonsense isn't it like yeah. such a, we're just living a lie at this point <laughs> yeah <laughs> just living yeah, a lie just, through pixels whatever you get fed through instagram that's that's, <laughs> that's the reality you're living in so Wait, it's not nice. It's not nice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really know where you go from there. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm going to get too metaphysical and start questioning my own existence. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love what you're doing. It's awesome. Do you want to like plug right. your socials and stuff like that? Um, yeah. And uh, yeah. Um, so I've got two Instagram. I've got uh, Ogle Skate and Ogle Joinery. Um, you should be able to find them. The logo says Ogle different colors um and the all facebook page as well nice that's about it no yeah hopefully have some more stuff coming soon and get the skate business a little bit more involved and see how it goes uh, what's your website going to be called when it's up um probably all skate right because it'll just be for the skateboards for now nice. um hopefully that's coming soon hopefully end of this month we'll have it up and running thank you stuff well, thank you for talking with me. This has been awesome. No, it's been it's really good. Honestly, been a joy to talk about all of this stuff. Like, it's definitely stuff that's been fascinating me lately about like yeah. running your own business and like just doing what you want to do instead of doing it for someone else or making money for someone else. You're making money for you, and it's, it's yeah. interesting stuff. I hope this inspires other people to do similar yeah, stuff. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, and if there's anybody out there that's got like a skill, you know, musician, artist, get in touch with me and see if we can uh, work something out. Awesome. Well, thanks. Help us both out. <laughs>